Ciao, soccer lovers! This week saw Sadia A play two complete sets of matches. Hump Day matches on Wednesday, which saw eight of the ten games feature a zero on the scoreline. And on the weekend, two players hit milestone goals. My name is Graziano. This is the Italian Soccer Addict Broadcast, and you are where you need to be to get all the information. Buongiorno a tutti. Hello, everybody. My name is Jim Iafomici, and I love my espresso. Hmm. Now, Graz, I have a very important question for you. How do you feel after watching eight soccer games last week? You know, Jim, I find that watching uh, hump day games on Wednesday always leaves me feeling drained. The hump Wednesday games in Syria A were on one hand anticlimactic as eight of the ten games featured a zero in the scoreline. But on the other hand, we saw some scoring at home explode as the 22 goals scored, 16 of them were by the home team. First off, Milan welcomed one of their favorite victims, Lazio, to the Miazza, where Lazio hadn't won since 1989. True to form, they kept the streak alive as Milan beat them 2-0, thanks to goals by Niang and Baca's fifth. Uwe, playing at home, regained first place by putting four by Cagliari, Rugani and Dani Alves got their first goals of the year and the 90 million euro man Higuain chipped in with his fourth. Roma feasted on wine and cheese at the Olimpico. The Egyptian connection El Shahrarrawa and Salah each got one and Zeko put in two. Totti played the entire 90 minutes and provided two assists. Like the statue of David, he gets better with age. Napoli fell from first place with a 0-0 tie at Genoa. Napoli hadn't gone scoreless in Serie A since San Gennaro was an altar boy. Inter, or should I say Cardi, visited Empoli where he scored yet another two goals for a 2-0 victory. Icardi now leads all scores in Italy with six goals. Other matches saw Udine tie Fiorentina 2-2. Amazing Chievo continues to surprise, this time beating Sassuolo 2-1. Atalanta have now lost three in a row after Palermo beat them 1-0. Pescara and Torino shared a 0-0 tie and yet another Verdi bomb saw Bologna beat Sampdoria 2-0. Heck, I haven't seen so many zeros since my grade 9 report card. Bologna Simone Verdi is making a habit of only scoring fantastic goals. Once again, he's my pick for the goal of the day with one, a one-time volley into the top right-hand corner. Bombs away! Inter, in my opinion, is showing tremendous signs of improvement. After Thor Rear sold his controlling share to Chinese giant Sun Inc., the Chinese investors got rid of Mancini and made some smart transfer market moves. These moves are paying off now and it's evident in their play. First, they addressed their need for midfielders. They brought in Ebra Banega and the trequartista Owe Mario. Then, to shore up the attack, added Candreva and South American wonder kid Gabriel Barbar Barbarossa or Gabi Gol. These additions and Icardi's magic entry become very interesting. On the weekend, some teams were definitely feeding the results of playing on Hump Wednesday. The first to feel the weak knees was Juventus at the Renzo Barbera in Palermo. They shot all their bullets 
on Wednesday and needed an own goal by Palermo's Godinha to win 1-0. In this game, Higuain could only muster one shot on net. The other big Wednesday scorer, Roma, traveled to Torino where they hadn't lost in 26 years. True to form though for this schizophrenic team, they were beat 3 to 1. Il Gallo got his fifth, and Iago Falke, whom Rome sent on loan to Torino, got his revenge and scored two goals. Hey, bye. The King of Rome, Francesco Totti, responded with his 250th career goal. Roma now only managed one point from their last three away games. Inter, coming off three straight wins and playing at home to Bologna, went down early to a desperate goal in the 14th. However, Perisic got it back, and that's all it was. It's a one-to-one -one tie. Games in which Icardi doesn't score, they don't win. Now in Milan, they're saying, no Icardi, no party. Not suffering post-Wednesday blues was Napoli, who beat their bestianera cable to the zero. Gabbiardini got his first of the 24th, and Hamzik got his 100th goal in Serie A in the 39th. Fiorentina at home to Milan saw a 0-0 tie. Zeros also dominant, dominated Genoa and Pescara, while Lazio got goals from Keita and Lulic to beat Empoli to a 0. I haven't seen so many zeros since my grade 10 report card. My goal of the week comes from Inter's Perisic. A beautiful one-time volley into the bottom right-hand corner. Perisic is very precise. How can an international sport like soccer, with its billions of viewers and billions of dollars, still function in the dark ages when it comes to adopting modern technology specifically video replay. Football, baseball, hockey, tennis, rugby, even curling has some sort of video replay, so why not soccer? Personally, I'm tired of watching offside goals, players bear-hugging each other on corner kicks, in-the-box tackles and shirt pulling, and extra time being awarded based on the ref's memory. Until these issues are addressed, I'm giving soccer a red card. Jim, did you know that Juventus set a record for earnings in Italy in one year with an earnings of 388 million euros? Wow. They also have Italy's highest payroll coming in at 290 million euros. In layman's terms, that means that for every Three Fiat 500s at a soul, the player gets one and a half. Oh, Graz, that's crazy. What's a player going to do with half a car? Half a Fiat 500? That's 250. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Did you know Gonzalo Higuain, transfer fee of 90 million euros? He is Italy's top paid player and he makes 15 million euros a year. Lowest on the pay scale belongs to Palermo's Titus. Krapskas, that's right, and he only makes 36,000 euros a year. You know what that means? Higuain can pay cash for his cars, and Krapskas, he needs a bus pass. <laughs> Definitely a loan to buy a Fiat 500, right? <laughs> yes. And finally, an interesting statistic coming from the EPL. Did you know that every Italian coach in the EPL lost on the weekend? Conte lost to Arsenal, Ranieri lost to Man U, Guido Alin lost to Man City, and uh, Zengo's Wolves got beat, as did Di Matteo's Aston Villa. One coach left to play Mazzari. Let's hope it's not a sweep. Forza Italia! Hurry, hurry hard! What's your rush? We're out of here. Okay. Finito! Adios! See you next week. Stay the signorina.